Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with the EVS 1000 General Overview. This presentation provides a practical introduction to the operation of Rody & Schwartz EVS 1000 series analyzers. This presentation is the first in a series of 12 short presentations on EVS 1000 series analyzers. After finishing this general introductory presentation, please see the other presentations in the series to learn how to use each of the specific measurement modes and or functions supported by the EVS. The EVS-1000 comes in three form factors. The EVS-G-1000 is primarily designed for ground-based measurements, although it can also be used in airborne applications as well. It has a full color screen and is usually operated via the front panel buttons or knobs. The EVS-F-1000 is designed specifically for use in flight inspection aircraft and is equipped with a standard A-Rank style connector. The EVS-D1000 is a drone-based version of the EVS, designed for guided or autonomous data collection. There are four ways of accessing or controlling the EVS-1000. For the EVS-G1000, physical buttons and a rotary knob can be used to input parameters, and the screen can be used for viewing results. All versions of the EVS, G, F, and D, also support a remote GUI, accessed using the free VNC Viewer utility. The remote GUI interface is identical to the interface on the EVS-G. Another method for controlling the EVS and retrieving results is via programmatic control, in which users can both configure the EVS and query settings and results using simple text commands sent and received via any programming language. And finally, the raw RF data can also be streamed in standard IQ format to a remote PC. We'll go over each of these methods on the next few slides. The physical user interface on the EVSG1000 consists of soft keys, which map to the functions on the right side of the screen, hard keys, which are used to access commonly used settings, and a keypad for entering numeric values. There's also a rotary knob, as well as a set of cursor keys, for changing values and navigating menus. All of these functions can also be performed through the EVS's remote graphical interface, which we'll discuss in just a moment. All versions of the EVS have a LAN connector which can be used for remote access. On the EVS-G, an Ethernet connector is located on the rear of the instrument. And on the EVS-F, the fan-out connector contains an Ethernet jack as well. EVS-D models use wireless LAN for their network connection. In all cases, either fixed or dynamic IP addresses can be configured. Once a LAN connection has been configured, the EVS graphical user interface can be both viewed and controlled via VNC, a widely used free application. Simply enter the EVS 1000's IP address in the VNC viewer or client application and press connect. Although no password is required by default, remote access can be password protected. The remote GUI is operated using a mouse to select graphical elements and keyboard shortcuts to emulate hard keys. For example, pressing M has the same effect as pressing the mode hard key. A complete list of these shortcuts can be found in the user manual. Another way to interface to the EVS is through programmatic control, that is, using text-based communications over a TCP IP connection. This can be used to issue commands or change configuration, query parameters or settings, and retrieve measurement results. For example, the popular Python programming language could be used to send this set of commands to the EVS to make a VOR measurement at 117.2 MHz. Then another command could be sent to retrieve the VOR derived bearing. Although these example code snips are written in Python, any programming language that supports sockets can be used to control the EVS programmatically. A complete set of all supported commands and examples can be found in the EVS user documentation. In addition to making measurements of nav and comm signals, the EVS can also simultaneously record raw RF spectrum data in binary format as so-called IQ data. This digital representation of spectrum can then be viewed and or processed using user-supplied programs or tools. The EVS can store this IQ data in the form of files, but it can also stream the data out continuously over its LAN connection. 
please see the separate presentation, Getting Started with the EVS 1000 Data Recording, to learn more about configuring and using IQ Streaming. Regardless of how the instrument is accessed, the EVS 1000 is always operated in one of the available measurement modes. These modes include NAVAID and COM specific modes, such as ILS, VOR, GBAS, etc., as well as more general analysis tools, such as RF or AF spectrum, or AF time domain analysis. Each one of these different modes is described in detail in a separate Getting Started presentation. For EVS models that contain two receiver boards, a different mode can be chosen for each board. These modes can be run simultaneously on different frequencies, but measurement results will be displayed only one board at a time. Although each mode is covered in a separate presentation, there are certain general parameters that apply to all measurement modes, namely amplitude settings, bandwidth settings, and measurement time, so we'll briefly cover these here. Note, however, that in many cases, these parameters can be left at their default settings. Amplitude settings affect the level of the received RF signals, and the attenuation mode can be set manually by the user, or the EVS can choose this mode automatically. There are three RF modes. The first is low noise, which enables a 15 dB preamplifier, and which is useful when scanning for distant signals. So-called normal mode does not apply any amplification or attenuation to the received signals. And low distortion mode adds 15 dB of attenuation in order to reduce the potential of overload caused by strong nearby signals. There's also a transducer correction option, which is primarily used to compensate for loss in the test setup due to antennas, cables, connectors, etc. Another general parameter is IF bandwidth, which is the frequency range over which measurements are performed. All of the spectral components of a signal should lie within this range. For example, most avionics comm signals will have a maximum bandwidth of 3 kHz. The same is true for ILS localizer and glide slope signals. VOR signals, on the other hand, would require a bandwidth of 25 kHz in order to correctly measure all signal components. That said, bandwidth parameters usually do not need to be manually changed since they are automatically set to the appropriate value in each measurement mode. The last general parameter is measurement time, which sets the measurement duration. Measurement time is the interval at which measurement values are recorded. Internally, this interval is 100 milliseconds, although this can be reduced to 10 milliseconds with the K22 high measurement rate option. It's possible to configure a longer measurement time, in which case the average is reported. In this example, a 500 millisecond measurement time means that five 100 millisecond measurement intervals are averaged and reported. This presentation provided a general overview of EVS 1000 series analyzers. We started by mentioning the four different methods for operating the EVS. The EVS-G has a physical user interface with a screen, buttons, and a rotary knob. All versions of the EVS support remote GUI access over VNC as well as programmatic control, and it's also possible to stream raw IQ data from any EVS model. The measurement functionality of the EVS 1000 is divided into different measurement modes. Some of these are measurements of NAVAID and COM signals, and some are more generic radio and audio frequency measurements. Measurement settings that are common to all modes include amplitude, bandwidth, and measurement time. And finally, Please see the individual presentations for each measurement mode or feature for more detailed explanation of their configuration and use. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with the EVS 1000 General Overview. If you'd like to learn more about EVS 1000 series analyzers or other avionics related topics, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.